Welcome in. It is Big Ten today. We are presented by Gatorade on this Wednesday. I'm Dave Revson. We're halfway through the Big Ten season. So much great stuff has already happened, and obviously the anticipation for the rest of the season is off the charts. And here to share that anticipation with me as she is every Wednesday, Ashley Adamson. Ashley, great to have you with us. And man, we're, we're going to look back a little bit on this show and talk about what we've seen so far. But what's ahead is so exciting. I mean, we are we're at officially the halfway point of the season, which is kind of in some ways hard to believe. I think we've learned a lot, Dave, so far, but I think we're going to learn a lot more, obviously, coming down the home stretch. And this is when things get really interesting. So as always, great to be with you. The, the best hour of my week. Well, I, I still, again, I find that hard to believe. I mean, we were talking <laughs> off the air about you sitting in traffic for an hour every week from O'Hare into downtown Chicago. I can't believe that's not better than this, but, but okay. Hanging out with you is, is beats beating even, beats uh, Chicago traffic. Even better than being in traffic. That is a ringing endorsement if there ever was one. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's dive into our big story and we'll use the big board to get us ready for the weekend slate, which starts with a bang. Number two, Oregon visiting Purdue on Friday night. Three early games on Saturday. We have Wisconsin at Northwestern. Big Noon features unbeaten Indiana hosting Nebraska. Michigan, Illinois is the lone battle of two ranked teams. USC tries to bounce back in Maryland. And Iowa and Michigan State in a tangle in prime time. Uh, let's start with Nebraska and Indiana, Ashley. And this IU story has captured everyone's imagination. It's pretty amazing to think that they are unbeaten at this point. Kurt Signetti still yet to lose a game as Indiana's head coach. Nebraska is one play in overtime away from being undefeated themselves. Obviously, just the one loss to Illinois. And to me, the, the biggest matchup in this game and the thing that kind of as I start to, to break it down and think about how it might go, the thing I'm most focused on is that Indiana offense, which has been absolutely fabulous against a Nebraska defense, which has been airtight for most of this year. Is that how you see it? Yeah, I mean, it's strength on strength. And I think this is the game that that may teach us potentially the most in, in week eight. So I'm, I'm obviously excited about this one for a lot of reasons. But I think when you look at it, let's if you start from the IU perspective, whenever you have sex, whenever you have success, the expectations rise. So if we asked IU fans, you know, in the summer, would making a bowl game in Kurt Signetti's first year, would that be a good season? And I think the vast majority of them would say, yes, we'd take that. But then they go out and they become the first bowl eligible team in America. And all of a sudden, the expectations are very different than what they were. So it, let's say IU, for example, doesn't win another regular season game, but they still go play in a bowl. No one is going to feel like that was a great season. So the expectations, they have gone up. And when you win games, the games get bigger. And that's exactly what has happened in Bloomington. They have passed every test since Kurt Signetti has taken over. But obviously, Dave, as you look at the schedule and it starts Saturday with Nebraska, those tests are about to get harder. You've got home games against the Huskers, Washington and Michigan. You're on the road at Michigan State and Ohio State. According to PFF, the strength of schedule for the first half of the season ranked 109th in FBS. The remaining half of the Hoosiers schedule is ranked 14th in terms of strength and schedule. So it, it, the competition is going to be much more difficult on the back half. But given how they've played, it's possible that they'll be favored in every one of those games other than maybe the one in Columbus. So Saturday, it's a huge opportunity for both teams. First sellout in Bloomington, I think, in three years. And I think the question for me is, is what does Nebraska look like? And Dylan Raiola, we've seen him show up in big moments. But what does he look like on the road in a big-time environment on Saturday. What, what's kind of the thing when you look at Nebraska, Dave, that stands out to you? What are you expecting from them? Well, I agree with your assessment. I'm really interested in Raiola. I think Nebraska, there's stuff they just have to clean up. I mean, special teams to me. Like, when you've had the most kicks and the most punts blocked of any team in the country, I think that's yeah. a very significant warning sign <laughs> that you've got a little bit of work to do there in special teams. Offensively, look, I, I do think they're good. Are they great? Is this a great run game? I don't think it's a great run game. I think what has stood out to me is the decision-making from Dylan Raiola has been pretty good. Again, I, I think, you know, similar story to what you're saying with IU is that I, I think, you know, Nebraska, they've, they've had some tests here, and, and certainly the game against Illinois 
Had it gone differently, we might be talking about Nebraska in the same kind of way that we're talking about Indiana. But this is the hardest game that Nebraska will have played as well. And so you do start to get kind of these litmus test games of how good are these teams truly. I think they're good. I think they're improved. You know, Nebraska, you talk about Indiana wanting to make a bowl, and I agree with you. Like, I do think that each time that you win a game and each time you pass a milestone, I think you start to think about things differently. That's just the human nature element of it. Like, Nebraska fans would be so delighted to get a win this week and just get the bowl thing out of the way and then see where this can get them. Again, Nebraska's got the longest bowl drought in power conference football. It's hard to believe. It's mind-boggling when you think about where they were. But it's there and it's real. And so I think from Nebraska's point of view, like getting a win here, first of all, it would end that run of not winning a game against a ranked team that amazingly goes back to 2016. So you'd end that. You'd end the bowl drought. You get all those monkeys off your back. And then you could say, hey, where's this season going to take us? Because I think there's still a chance for it to take them to a really good place. Dave, I'm with you 100%, and I I think you're right. You hit the nail on the head. For Nebraska, you finally win a close game, which had been, you know, kind of a thorn in their side. They win a close game against Rutgers. Their defense was terrific, and the reason they won. And now, can you beat a ranked team, which is something that you haven't done, as you said, since 2016 when they beat Oregon. They've lost 25 straight against ranked teams. So we'll learn a lot about both of those teams moving forward. I want to spin it forward to the top 25 showdown, the only one.